The Lord God put man in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Now skip forward to Revelation 21. The nations will walk by the light, the light of the Lamb. And the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into the city, the new Jerusalem. On no day will its gates ever be shut. Now, make, make the parallel back to Eden and the creation, where man was made to be king and woman was made to be queen of the earth. And there were... There, there was gold and there were minerals and there was the garden that was cultivated and all. And there was, there was a splendor. And now fast forward, the nations, not just one man and woman, but many, many, many people, many women and many men will bring their splendor into the city. It's not just a garden. Now it's a city. And what's at the center of the, the city? A garden. The tree of life actually growing on both sides of the river. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. The river of the water of life. The rivers are talked about in Genesis 2. Flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Other than some metaphorical references in Proverbs about wisdom being a tree of life. And then the one reference in Revelation 3 to the tree of life being in the paradise of God. We haven't seen the tree of life. When we get to Revelation 22, we haven't seen the tree of life since the first few chapters of Genesis, with those exceptions that I stated. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Well, if it's growing on both sides of the river, as uh, William Hendrickson, I think, says it, it's more like a forest of life now. Bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. God's servants will serve him. You think of the new earth as, you think of having this whole thing about boredom. Servants, we will serve him. Servants have things to do, places to go, people to see. The life of a servant is not boring, it's active. It might be drudgerous if it's in a world that's under the fall and if it's under a master who isn't kind. But we will serve the King of Kings. We will serve our Lord God and it will not be in a world under the curse and what we do will not be drudgery. It will be meaningful and productive. And even when it says the kings of the earth will bring the splendors of the nations into the city. Splendor is a word that's used sometimes of the artif artifacts and the, the creations, the cultural, um, artistic types of things that are developed. No longer will there be any curse. God's servants will serve him. And here it is, verse 5, they will reign forever and ever. They will reign. That's what Adam and Eve were commanded to do. To have dominion is to reign over. They were to reign over the earth. So did God ever give up his original plan for righteous men and women to rule the earth to his glory? No. This is the marvel of redemption that Christ came into the world not to abandon God's original plan, but to help, well, to be the critical element in fulfilling it. Does that make sense? 